On this example, we're given a demand function. So d of q equals this negative quadratic function, so negative q squared minus 2q plus 504. All right, where, and this is important, we want to identify what our variables kind of mean and what our function means. So because the demand function, sometimes it has q as our variable, sometimes it has p as the variable. Um, so let's just be careful about this. q is in thousands of units sold. So if Q is in thousands of units sold, Q is a quantity. And it also tells us that D of Q is dollars per unit. All right, so D of Q is a price, and Q is a quantity, but it's in thousands. So let's be careful about that. In part A, it asks us if 6,000 units are to be sold, what price should be charged for the item? All right, so 6,000, we're thinking that's a quantity, so we're thinking Q should be 6,000. But I want us to be careful about this because Q is in thousands. We can't plug in 6,000. We have to go all the way back to just saying Q equals 6. All right, because Q is defined to be in thousands. All right, so we have a value for Q. We want to replace each of the Qs in our function with 6. So we're going to evaluate this at uh, the demand when our quantity is 6 is going to be given by negative of 6 squared minus 2 times instead of q we're going to replace that with the 6 plus 504 which works out to be what negative 6 squared is 36 minus 2 times 6 is 12 plus 504 this works out to be in my calculation 400 and 56. And if we're thinking about what kind of units are we looking at, well, this is a value for d of 6, or um, the, is the dollars per unit. All right, so d of q is dollars per unit, so that means um, it's going to be in dollars. All right, we used a quantity, plugged it in, got a dollar amount coming out. On part B, we want to know if a price of $309 is set for this item, how many units can be can you expect to sell? All right, so what we want to do in this case is first identify we have 309 as our value given to us. That's in dollars, so that's a value for D of Q. So what I'm going to do is on the left-hand side, replace D of Q in our original function with 309, and it's going to equal whatever's on the right-hand side, negative Q squared minus 2Q plus 504. So what this has given us is it's a quadratic equation. So let's try to solve this down by first getting everything on one side. And I notice we have a negative Q squared, our highest power of Q. I'm going to go ahead and move everything to the left-hand side to make that a positive Q squared because factoring or using the zero product property um, or even the quadratic formula, I like having my leading coefficient being positive. So I'm adding Q squared to move it over to the left-hand side. I'm going to add 2q to move it to the left hand side and I'm going to subtract 504. So subtracting the 504 from both sides will move it over. We have to do the computation 309 minus 504 gives me negative 195 and that'll put 0 on the right hand side. Now I didn't show my work of adding the q squared or adding the 2q but hopefully that makes sense as I'm just visualizing moving them over to the left hand side. All right, from here, trying to solve this equation, well, we have zero on one side. We could always pull out the quadratic formula. No big deal. We could pull that out, plug in 1 for A, 2 for B, and negative 195 for C, and work it down. But I think 195 is actually not too bad to do some factoring with. Because 195, our constant, doesn't factor that many different ways. It could be 3 times 65. It could be 5 times 39, or it could be 13 times 15. And those are all the ways to factor 195. Again, use the quadratic formula if that's easier for you, but I'm going to go through this part using factoring. All right, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick out to use 13 and 15 because we have a subtraction for our uh, 195 for our constant, and these two values. 15 minus 13, subtract to make that middle number, the 2. All right, so I think factoring should work pretty nicely in this case. 
it's going to break apart as q and q to make the q squared. I'm going to choose the 13 and the 15, those factors I listed off to the side. And I'm going to go ahead and make sure these add together to make a positive 2. So I'm going to make it a positive 15 and a minus 13. 15 minus 13, as you can see off to the side, equals positive 2. From here, all that remains is we set each factor equal to 0. And then we solve these down independently. So I'm going to add 13 for my first equation and get q equals 13. And I'm going to subtract 15 from both sides on the right one and get q equals negative 15. So let's think about this. It looks like we have two different solutions, but do they make sense? All right, how many units can you expect to sell if you're pricing them at $309 each? Well, because Q is our quantity, does it make sense to have a negative number that we're selling? And the answer probably is no. It doesn't make sense to be selling negative 15,000 units of anything. All right, that's not a very good business model. So let's get rid of the negative and just focus on Q being 13 or selling 13,000 of these units. All right, finally, let's look at part C. All right, we want to figure out at what value of Q does D of Q cross the Q axis. All right, so when we're thinking about D of Q crossing the Q axis, that can be a little bit confusing. So what we have in our situation is our graph looks something along these lines. All right, looking back here, remember it was d of q equals a negative quadratic. So it's a parabola that's been flipped upside down, moved up some number of units. Take my word for it, it looks something along these lines. So when we're talking about when does d of q cross the q axis, our q is the independent variable. It goes along here like normally we think of these as being f of x right where x is the x-axis and we have f of x going up and down well in our case it's d of q which means that q goes along the sort of x-axis and um, price points d of q goes up and down here so what we're trying to do is figure out when do we cross the q axis so we're looking for this point down here well, when that happens, that's kind of like finding where do we have x-intercepts. That's when the entire function equals 0. So in our case, we're going to fill in 0 for d of q. And again, I kind of pointed to the right-hand side because we only want our quantity um, to be positive. Again, business model, it doesn't make sense to be selling a negative quantity. All right, so to get this, I'm going to replace the left-hand side of our original function with 0. So 0 is going in up here for d of q. And it's going to be 0 equals that negative q squared minus 2q plus 504. So 0 equals negative q squared minus 2q plus 504. All right, let's think about how can we solve this down. Well, it'd be nice if we could factor it. Before I do any solving down, I'm going to move everything. You can think of it as moving it to the left-hand side by adding the q squared, adding the 2q, and subtracting uh, 504. Or I like to visualize it as multiply both sides by a negative 1. 0 times negative 1 is still going to be 0. But as we multiply each term by negative 1, it just switches the signs. So positive q squared plus 2q minus 504. And now we have a quadratic equation um, that we want to solve down, but when we think about solving this down, I don't think 504 is going to factor very nicely for us like we did in part B. So instead, let's go ahead and pull out the quadratic formula. and think about plugging into this and getting our solution. So to plug in, I'm going to use a equals 1, b equals 2, and c equals negative 504. So, of course, on the left-hand side, it's not x, it's q is our variable. But q is going to be given by negative of 2 plus or minus the square root of 2 squared minus 4 times a was 1 times c, negative 504. 
all over two times a, which is one. Now you will get to the exact same solution if you didn't choose to get rid of the, the negative leading coefficient. I just sort of am inclined to do that as I go through these because I like dealing with a positive leading coefficient. All right, from here, let's think about our simplifying. It's gonna be negative two plus or minus the square root of two squared is four. And then when we have minus four times a negative, 504, that's going to be plus 2016, all over 2 times 1 makes 2, or negative 2 plus or minus the square root of 2020, all over 2. Now this square root of 2020 doesn't work out nicely, so what we're going to do is basically think to ourselves, we have a positive case here. with an addition in the middle, and we have a negative case. Q could equal negative two minus the square root of 2020 all over two, and get approximations for each of these as we go through it. All right, in my case, the positive case, I got positive 21.472, calculator, and in the negative case, I got negative 23.472. So in our case, because it's real life, you know, demand function going on here. The negative doesn't make too much sense, so I'm going to get rid of that one. That would be this value over here on the left-hand side of our graph. And I'm going to keep the positive 21.472. All right, hope this helps out. Again, multiple different ways you could work through these. You could just rely on the quadratic formula exclusively for solving these quadratic equations. Try to give you some variety like in part B by doing some factoring and zero product property. But I hope this helps out as you're working through these problems. Good luck.